hi, it's me. So I felt like filming a video, so I'm making a video. And I felt inspired to kind of talk about like this period of time that started about 10 years ago and lasted about two years where I was very heavily comparing my writing process to the writing processes of other writers. And this started, I think, because I started blogging in the summer of 2012. And then by the beginning of 2013, I was very involved in the writing community. I was posting and like commenting on writing forums on a regular basis. I had gotten plugged into the blogging community. And so for the first time in my life, I was around a lot of other writers and communicating with them on a regular basis. And I noticed very quickly that my writing process was very different from the writing process of most of the other writers. And it's not that all the writing processes were the same, it's just that a lot of them did a lot of the same things. And I started feeling like I was doing something wrong and that because they've been in the writing community longer and because so many of them have read some of the same like writing craft books that, you know, I needed to be doing what they were doing so that I could get better. And I didn't really realize this was happening until about like the end of summer 2013 when I first came across the phrase soggy middle. And it's not that I never got to like one of the midpoints in my book and, and found the story sagging in places. It's just I, it had never bothered me before. Before I was around a lot of other writers, if I hit a wall, if I hit a stumbling block, if something wasn't working, I fixed it if I could and then I moved on. If I couldn't fix it, I abandoned the story and just worked on something else. And to me, it was no big deal. But this period of time, especially, you know, like that late summer 2013, I noticed that there were a lot of writers who were fighting so hard to get their stories to work. And I, w I was the kind of writer that like, if the project wasn't work, I just set aside and walked away and maybe I would come back to it later or maybe I wouldn't and it just didn't bother me. But then I started thinking, okay, well maybe I'm doing something wrong and maybe I should fight for my stories and maybe I don't love them enough if I'm not fighting for them. And maybe that's why I can't get published because I'm not obsessed with my stories and I'm not willing to bleed all over them, you know, and like drive myself crazy. And most writers, a lot of writers, I don't know if it's most writers, but a lot of writers are like very neurotic, very like into overanalyzing everything and like stressing about everything. And that just was not like the way I worked. <laughs> so I have a list of things that I tried that worked for a lot of other writers, but absolutely did not work for me. So the first thing I have on my list are mood boards. And I got really into mood boards in 2013 because like all these other writers were sharing their mood boards and they were gorgeous. And so I also wanted these beautiful mood boards, but I very quickly found, and I abandoned this um, about two months after I started. Um, it wasn't even that long. I actually abandoned it about a month after I started because I made a Pinterest account and then I didn't even use it for like the first like four or five weeks I had it. And in the few weeks that I used it, I just found it to be like a complete waste of time. It was a distraction. It didn't help me. It didn't inspire anything. You know, I'm not one of those writers that's very externally motivated and like inspired. I do take in inspiration from external sources, but it's kind of like I put it in an inspiration bank that I draw from when I need it. And I don't like, I'm not the kind of writer that like, I'm going to go travel, you know, somewhere and get inspired. You know, I might get inspired, but that inspiration may not show up for like five years, you know, when I need it. So while I know, you know, having the mood board and some kind of aesthetic, you know, whether it's like digital or physical mood board works for a lot of people, I just found it like a good for nothing distraction. And the next thing I tried was making a playlist. Now I do still make playlists for my stories, but like some writers, they have like these like long playlists or have like 25, 40 songs on them and they listen to it while they write and it just like really pumps them up. My playlists more like have like three songs on them. I have one that has 10, but it's like, I use it to kind of like help me focus. And so because it can help me focus, it can like, you know, help me envision certain scenes, but those scenes may not be in the book. You know, and it's more like to to help with, with like, 
I guess like the mood and to help I guess mostly just to put me in the mood to write and I really love music you know it, it calms my brain and so when I have songs like specific to a, a certain playlist I think about that story when I'm listening to the playlist and it helps me focus and but I only listen to it if I'm having trouble focus focusing and I don't surprisingly I don't have usually when I sit down to write I don't have trouble focusing and I usually write in complete silence and if I do write to music I have to put the song on repeat and I just kind of like play it in the background and it doesn't really help me like it doesn't really inspire me to write but I guess it does kind of indirectly sometimes help me write so you know this is it's not a, it's not a skill I needed. It's not something I needed to do. I don't know if this it's not a skill. It's not something that I needed to do, but it's something that I found somewhat useful that I had picked up. Might be the only thing on this list that I have found somewhat useful. So the next thing on the list is story mapping. And this is like it's like when you create a mind map and so you have like a bubble with like maybe say like a character's name in it and you have all these other bubbles of like things that like help you with the character, like things about their personality and like physical characteristics or whatever. And it looks like, it looks like a mind map, it's just like a bubble. <laughs> a bunch of little bubbles around it. And I did try this. I got a free trial of some mind mapping software. I made one bubble with like three things shooting off of it. It did absolutely nothing for me. I did not get it at all. And then the next thing I tried doing was editing with note cards. So a lot of writers, and it doesn't have to be like physical note cards, it could also be like sticky notes. And I did try this, I tried note cards, I tried sticky notes because I talked to a lot of writers and they were like, oh yeah, you know, I write down my editing notes as I go and you know, it, it makes sure I get the story done, which a lot of writers have a problem with. They have a problem with like keeping the story moving forward and if they edit as they go, they get like stuck in this like rewriting cycle that is becomes very difficult to get out of and then their stories don't get finished, but I don't have that problem. I do edit as I go but I also finished the stories that I'm working on. But I decided to try this to see if it would be more efficient, you know, so if I'm on chapter like, you know, 25, and then I realize there's something in chapter 13 that I wanna change, normally, and what I do currently, <laughs> and what I was doing before, I tried this short stint with doing, um, with like taking notes, is that I would just go back and fix it. You know, I would go back and fix it, and I would go back and read over it, you know, and I would often start my writing sessions with like a mini editing session and that worked really well for me. But I decided to try moving on and I put stuff on note cards and on sticky notes and sometimes in a notebook. And then I just moved on. I was like, you know what, I'll fix it later and I moved on. And at first I was like, okay, that's, that's nice. I got the story done a little bit faster, but then editing, which I normally love editing because I've already done like most of the heavy lifting already. And so editing is just like a treat. I get to see what I wrote. I get to like fix things and like make things better and smooth things out. And I just absolutely love editing. And also just love writing as well. And this made editing painful for me because instead of getting to sit down and enjoy what I'm doing, I now have to sit down and fix things. And I would, I tried it different ways where like I went through the story and then I would get to like the, the macro notes, you know, as I went through the story. And I also tried doing it where I did the macro editing notes first and then started over from the beginning and read through the story. And either way, I just, I did not like it. It didn't help. I didn't feel better. Um, and so I quickly, I very quickly <laughs> abandoned this. It's like it was fine, but it didn't help. I didn't feel better. I didn't edit more efficiently. And it actually, like I said, made the editing process more stressful for me and less fun, which I did not enjoy. <laughs> and then the next thing on my list is Scrivener. I I don't know if, if maybe I just don't like change. I try like a free trial of Scrivener. Um, I think you get a free trial of Scrivener when you win NaNoWriMo. So I think the first year I won NaNoWriMo in 2013, I tried Scrivener. I I don't know. I I sometimes I I feel like I'm not, I'm like stupid or something. <laughs> 
<laughs> and sometimes I feel like I'm just like super brilliant. But the first time I tried to use Scrivener, I literally just like it made no sense to me. And I, I didn't even, I barely tried. I, I looked at it for like 15, 20 minutes and then I quit. And so like the next year in 2014, when I won NaNoWriMo, I got my free trial of Scrivener again. And this time I used the entire 30 days and, and it just didn't work for me. I don't I don't know if it's because I don't like change or if I just had gotten so used to Word that I didn't want to write any other way. It's like I, I have like my notes that I take by hand. I have my notes that I put on my phone and then I write and I copy and paste notes from my phone onto my document. And whether I'm using Evernote or a notes app or something, I can pull it up on my computer and just cut and paste it into the document. You know, cause sometimes I'm away from home, I'll get like, you know, inspired, you know, cause you know, sometimes when I'm away from home, like I'll, I'll think of something I'm like, oh, I need to fix that. Or, oh, I forgot to do this in this last scene and I'll make myself a note. And then, you know, I'll start my writing session with a little mini editing session. And I don't know, like Scrivener has all like these features and you can have your notes right there and you can jump around from chapter to chapter. And yeah, sometimes when I'm in Word, I do have to do like a lot of scrolling and like I'm on page 75 and I have to scroll back up to page, you know, 30 because I want to change something in whatever chapter and I'm using the search and find. But I also don't mind doing that. It doesn't take that long. I'm used to it. And I just... I just, I just didn't get it, I guess. So the next thing I tried was interviewing my characters. And I just found this process to be extremely redundant. I am of the mindset that like, when I get the story idea, I either know the character or I don't. And <laughs> if I don't know them, interviewing them did not help. You know, it's like, yes, I could come up with answers to these questions, but it didn't help me get to know the character at all. It's like I either already like instinctively, intuitively, organically, whatever, <laughs> know this character or I, or I don't. And so if I do, then interviewing them is unnecessary. And if I don't, then interviewing them is not going to help. And I already have a note taking process that works really well for me. And I use that note-taking process so consistently that I have literally thought about like mass producing a notebook for myself because I would already have like, you know, the framework and then I would just be filling in the blanks, but I haven't done that yet. I did start um, kind of playing around with like, like a design. And now that I've made a couple of planners and a couple of reading journals, I think I could actually make something that would work really well for me that I would enjoy using. And so I might try to do that. I really like my composition books, but you know, this was already, <laughs> I already had the template and I think I would really enjoy that. But anyway, I've had people, like I've been to writing conferences, you know, where they tell you to like, oh, write a fake obituary for your character to help you get to know them better. You know, write like a wedding announcement or whatever. And those are fun to do, but those are in the same category as interviewing my character. Like it literally does not help me if I don't already know them. <laughs> okay, so the next thing I have written down is like tracking my word count. So a lot of writers um, at one point were like really into like using these spreadsheets. And so they would sit down to like write for 30 minutes and then like they would do like writing sprints. Now I do like doing writing sprints because it, it's fun to like write with a bunch of other writers and then like when the timer goes off, you know, you can like relax, go to the bathroom, get some water, whatever, and then you sit down and you get back to work. And I really like that, but this is like when you sit down to write and then when you're done, you track your process not your process, your progress. And so like if I wrote for 30 minutes and I would see how many words I wrote in that 30 minutes and I got like strangely competitive with myself and stressed out, like trying to like beat my workouts from like the previous like writing session. And it yeah, it just ended up being like extremely stressful and did not help. And then I started shutting down and becoming less productive. 
and then I started thinking that there was something wrong with me. So like if I had an hour where I put up like some kind of crazy workout, like 2000 words in one hour, then if I had a writing session where I put up 900 words, I thought there was something wrong with that chapter. And it's not because I just had to write it slower because I was thinking more or just I was writing slower in general. And I don't even consider 900 words in an hour to be slow. But it's like if I once I knew that I could potentially if I was just like really in the zone write 2,000 words in one hour then I start feeling like anything under 1,500 you know something was wrong and then I started stressing out wondering what it meant for the story <laughs> okay the next thing I have is traveling and again this is this goes back to what I said earlier about how like you know, I I pull in different things and put it into like an inspiration bank that I draw from later. And so there are some writers that are like, oh, I have a story. I have a scene in my story like set in a, a cemetery. And so I went and visited the cemetery and I got inspiration. Like that doesn't, that doesn't do anything for me. You know, it's like if I need to do that in the moment, then like I'll do that. Because like recently in Ari's story, um, she was reading Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde and I had not read it. Now I read the other books that she, that she was reading in the story, but I hadn't read that. And so I went and looked it up, saw that it was actually pretty short. So I pulled out my copy of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. I knocked it out in a couple of days and I found it a little hard to read, but I also really found it very helpful <laughs> too. And I felt like it would be helpful for me to read it because, because again, like I, I'm just very internally driven, very intuitively driven. And so I felt like it would help. So I read it. Okay. If the blocking looks a little different, my phone cut off on me. So, but I think I finished my last point that I was talking about, about traveling, which brings me to the last thing I wanted to mention, which, which is related to the traveling and that's research. Um, sometimes you need to do research for a book. Um, I don't typically write the kind of books that I need to do research for, though. So if I come across something as I'm reading that I need to look up, then I will just kind of look it up on the spot and then keep it moving. I call this like flash research or researching as I go. But there are some writers, you know, who are like, which brings me back to that like cemetery example, where they want to very specifically like go to a cemetery um, for the explicit purpose of like drawing inspiration and like, you know, looking at how the cemeteries are laid out and things of that nature. I'm more like, again, like drawing from that inspiration bank and, and like memory of like times I've been in the cemetery and just like using the knowledge that I already have rather than purposely going out and getting more information that I may or may not need in the story. And so I will give you an example. I was writing, I was working on this book years ago and there was like flashbacks that took place like 500 years prior to like the rest of the story. And so the amount of research I had to do just to have like these like five scenes set in the past was was horrendous it was horrendous and I wish I had just waited until I got to those past scenes to see what I actually needed because I actually abandoned the project because of it and this is exactly why I don't do research ahead of time because I don't know what I'm going to need and so like it was set in like um 16th century Portugal and like the scenes and so I got um I because I knew those scenes were coming up I started looking up okay like what was the typical dress who is the king of England did port did, did Portugal have its own king or did they report to the king of another country you know and what did the you know nobility system look like and what did they typically eat and you know like the character um like the the focal character for those past scenes you know, it was a very wealthy family and I didn't really understand like those dynamics. And I just fell into this research hole. I remember I was sitting at the top of the stairs because I was in my townhouse at the time. And one of my neighbors was like cleaning and she she could be a little loud when she was cleaning. It didn't last forever. So I didn't like pitch a fit about it. But I was sitting at the top of the stairs to get some distance from where the music was coming from. And I was up there the entire time she was cleaning, which was about an hour 
plus like another like 20 or 30 minutes just like looking up stuff and that was just one session and I had like multiple sessions like that of me trying to figure out all this random stuff and I realized you know later like after I abandoned that project because because the amount of research just for those little things was just really overwhelming um that I should have just treated those like past scenes the same way I treat everything else it's like it's probably not going to be the most historically accurate thing but it also would have kept the story moving and yeah so basically my point is doing research ahead of time while it may work for a lot of other people may be necessary for other people for what you know specific stories um it doesn't work for me okay so that's all I'm going to say in this video and yeah Sometimes I, when I think back on this time, I felt like I had temporarily picked up like the bad habits and kind of like the kind of neurotic overthinking tendencies that a lot of writers, you know, have. And I'm thankful that I, that those things were off. And I'm very thankful that I have gotten back to like what is normal for me because apparently the only like writing process that really works for me is what I naturally do on my own. And thankfully, you don't have to be a rocket scientist or Einstein to figure that out because I'm clearly not Einstein or a rocket scientist. <laughs> okay, so that's all I have to say for today. If you can relate, let me know. If you have picked up some other writer's bad habits, you know, feel free to vent in the, the comment section. And I will see you guys in the next video. And also, if you like this video, feel free to let me know. <laughs> And I will see you guys later. Bye.